Hello friends, welcome back to the shop. Today is Sunday, December 26th, the day after Christmas. And I am out of practice with the whole video thing because I just went halfway through this video and realized I forgot to hit record. So we'll do it again. Hope you guys had a wonderful Christmas. Uh, we sure did. More about that, but most important thing I want to talk about today is to let you know that there will be a YouTube slash Instagram pipe smokers meetup at Boswell's in Chambersburg. Uh, Brian Doran was, was kind of organizing this, and Brian, as many of you know, uh, sadly lost his mother-in-law just a few days before Christmas. So Brian's been dealing with that and, and you know, family things, and uh, I, I'm i just sort of trying to do some PR work and, and get the word out about this meetup. I'm not sure if Brian's going. I hope he is, because I'd love to see him. I'm going. Armchair Piper Ed is going with me. Uh, my buddy Eric, uh, Eric S., may or may not be going. I have to talk to him. Uh, he, he was thinking about it. Uh, I believe Greg Tunnel's going from the Tunnel Take, and I think Philly Piper's going, and I'm sure other folks are going to be showing up. So it's Boswell's in Chambersburg. Uh, they open at 9, they close at 6. We're thinking, Ed and I at least, are thinking that we're, we're not going to leave too early. Maybe leave Ed's about 9 and drive there. It's about a two and a half hour drive for us. So we'll plan to be there 11, 11.30, something like that. And, you know, stay till 2, 3 o'clock or so, and then head back. Um, but, folks, I really hope I get to see you guys. So, if you're in the area and you're free on December 30th, uh, come on out to Boswell's. I uh, talked to, to Rachel. Uh, she very graciously has uh, let the store know that we will be there. Uh, they're going to have coffee available. Uh, there might be some tobaccos. Where I'm going to bring something special, a tin of something special, I don't know what yet. Uh, going to bring three or four pipes and we're just going to hang out and share stories and tobaccos and smoke and get to know one another a bit better. So it's a great, great opportunity to meet some of us uh, face to face, uh, to meet some of you that, that maybe aren't video guys but but are, uh, you know, viewers and you know, I'd love that and I know that Ed would love it too and I'm sure Greg and everybody else that's going would love <laughs> to meet folks, whether or not you're video makers, whether or not you post on Instagram. If you're part of this community, we'd love to see you. So if you're within a reasonable distance of Boswell's on December 30th in Chambersburg, uh, come on out. All right. So Christmas was wonderful. We, uh, I, I told you, my wife and I exchanged gifts, but it's not like we we really want or need anything because we sort of take care of one another during the year. But we, you know, it's nice to open gifts on Christmas morning. It's a tradition. And I did okay this year. I, I bought her three things. Uh, one of them she liked, one of them she's thinking about, and one of them she wanted to know where the receipt was. So that's not bad for me. Um, she did wonderful because she mostly let me order the things. <laughs> so I was surprised by a nice box of tobacco from smokingpipes.com. Uh, she got me two pounds of haunted bookshop and four tins. And the funny thing is I ordered this. You know, I, I ordered it uh, back when they had their 20% off sale. So this is quite a few weeks back, a 20% off Cornell and Deal. So I had forgotten the tins. So I got two tins of, of Grey Ghost, which I love and I'm really happy about. I also got a tin of Star of the East Flake that I vaguely remember putting on the order. And I'm looking forward to that because I've been enjoying a lot of Kia in flake form. By the way, I'm smoking, uh, this is my Paul Winslow, or as the Dorham Duke and I call it, Mr. Winslow. Thank you, Dorham Duke. And I'm smoking Black Frigate, which is a uh, crumble cake with plenty of Latakia and really enjoying it. So I'm thinking maybe the pressed forms of Latakia are going to be okay for me. And I'm looking forward to trying to start these flakes now. Uh, the other one, 
Sunset Harbor Flake. I have no idea how that got into the uh, into the card. I don't remember ordering it. I'm happy. I'll try it. Never had it. So there we have that. Um, there was also a, a drill index uh, set of, set of drills that I wanted. Um, oh, a little magnetic lamp for my lathe, which I'm very happy about, because uh, it's hard sometimes to see right up close to the chuck. I've got an overhead light, but there's just so much stuff there that more light in there would, would be wonderful. Uh, yeah, because it was fun. But she surprised me with something. And I, this, so I know you've seen these things. I've got a short video here that I borrowed from Shutterstock, uh, and you'll hopefully immediately recognize this. They, they show up at shopping malls and car lots and everything. I don't know what they're called. I call them the woohoo guy. <laughs> and every time I see one of these, I am just filled with joy. It makes me smile. I love these things. I don't know why, but there's something about this that just makes me happy. And every time I see one, we're out driving and there'll be one, I say to my wife, you know, after going woohoo and being happy, I say to my wife, we should get one of those for the front lawn. My thought is, you get a white one, you know, completely white, and you put colored lights inside of it. So at Christmas time, you alternate green and red, flash them. Fourth of July, red, white, and blue. Easter pink and blue. I mean, you could have this thing going year-round. St. Patrick's Day, make it green. This could be a year-round decoration, and it would just constantly be out there on the front lawn, waving its arms and making people happy. And I could put a lawn chair out there and just watch it and be happy. Well, she's against this. She does not want this. Uh, it might have something to do with the fact that it's 30 feet tall. I tell her the neighbors would love it. She's just not convinced. So, I'm not going to get a woohoo guy for my front lawn, but look at what she did. <laughs> she got me one for my desk. <laughs> it's a little little fan unit. It's got a little guy. And the physics make it hard. This, this, I'm actually surprised this works. Um, and it, it, it's not the same kind of movement. It would be great if it was slower, but you can't scale down the physics that well. But this is wonderful. I am so happy. This will probably make an appearance in other videos. Uh, might use it on the live stream when I get a tip. Instead of ringing the, the foghorn, blowing the foghorn, I could turn on the woohoo guy. Ah, uh, yeah. <laughs> so that was my Christmas. <laughs> Hope yours was, was wonderful as well. I've got some black coffee. Ilva, Ilva, I hope your Christmas was good. My buddy Couch, Ilva's dad. I'm Ilva's godfather. Uh, Ilva's dad, Couch, uh, was talking to him the other day, and he actually helped me with my Christmas entertainment. He doesn't know about this yet. So, so Couch, uh, Couch underscore incident on Instagram. I think it's the Dunning-Kruger experiment on, uh, on YouTube. A uh, wonderful guy, uh, and of course, Ilva's a wonderful dog. But uh, I'll tell you about the entertainment thing, but i got to go back a bit. So my wife and I have been having this discussion leading up to Christmas. And the discussion was... Silly. But we've been discussing, not arguing exactly, but discussing whether or not Die Hard is a Christmas movie. I know a lot of people think that it is, and it might surprise you to find out that I am actually on the con side here. I do not think Die Hard is a Christmas movie. I think Die Hard is a movie that takes place around Christmas. A Christmas movie should be focused on Christmas, not on a terrorist takeover of a, of a building. Now. If you like to watch Die Hard at Christmas, and that's your tradition, fantastic. Traditions are important, and, and, and that's wonderful. But it's not a Christmas movie. You know, if I can, I can take my 1920s Dunhill, don't have one, and I can put Captain Black Grape in it, don't have any, and smoke that and be happy, and that's great, that's wonderful. 
but I can't call it a Savinelli with Haunted Bookshop. You're not allowed to do that. <laughs> Likewise, you can watch Die Hard at Christmas, but you can't call it a Christmas movie. My wife says it is, so we decided on Christmas Eve that we were going to watch Die Hard, and we did. And, you know, neither one of us care very much. <laughs> It's a reasonable movie. Not in my top ten, but it's a good movie. Uh, enjoyed seeing it again. She enjoyed seeing it again. We got to the end of the movie. I said, see, I told you it's not a Christmas movie. And she said, it absolutely is a Christmas So, there we go. Uh, and we won't think about it again, but we just are on different sides of that. Now, I was talking to, the reason I bring this up is I was talking to Couch, um, Maybe Christmas evening. I don't remember, but it's probably it's probably the date. It's probably Wednesday. Anyway, we were chatting and um, we we're talking about movies or something. I don't know how it came up, but but the movie Fight Club came up, and we both agreed that that is a great movie. Now, Fight Club isn't for everyone. Okay, it's it's violent. It's coarse language. It's very very male centric. Uh, I personally think it's a well-made film. And I, I have room in my life for these kinds of things. You know, another one that I think is really well made is Kill Bill. And a lot of people would say, oh, God, it's so violent and bloody and, you know, there's cursing and everything. Yes. But it's well put together. It evokes emotion. You, it, like when you look at a painting or you read a poem, the, the thing that's important is not necessarily what's there. The thing that's important is what it does to you, right? Your experience of that, what it evokes in you. And I think the same is true of, of, of movies. There are movies that are just good, solid entertainment. I put Die Hard in that category. Die Hard doesn't evoke anything in me. But when I watch Fight Club or I watch Kill Bill or uh, I got to think of a couple here now that, that uh, I watch... Oh, goodness. The original Frankenstein, 31 Frankenstein. Or uh, Kurosawa's uh, Seven Samurai. Or um, a good Western like The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly, uh, which I put in there for obvious reasons. It, those, they, I don't just enjoy those because they're entertaining, but they evoke something in me. And likewise, these movies do that. So, you know, it's not for everyone, but I think there's, there's value in them for me. Anyway, talking to Couch about this, the thought comes into the back of my mind. Is Fight Club a Christmas movie? Now, there's a scene in Fight Club that I was thinking of that takes place outside... They're blowing up a um, big public art display that's a big giant round ball and they basically blow up the base so that it rolls off and goes into a coffee shop. Uh, that's the scene I was thinking of. I thought there was a Christmas tree somewhere in there and if there was, I was going to declare Fight Club a Christmas movie. There wasn't. But the point is, I, I stayed up late last night and watched it, and uh, I enjoyed it. It's, it. Again, it's a good movie, but not a Christmas movie. So thank you, Couch, for the inspiration to uh, go and spend a couple hours of my Christmas watching Fight Club. So other... Uh, other news, shop news, working away. I you know, took, took a couple of days off Christmas Eve, Christmas, but I'm going to get back to it today. Uh, still working on that stem from Mark, Bama Guitar Dude. Got a number of stems that, I, that I'm making. Um, and then I'll be caught up, and hopefully you had a chance to see my holiday letter that I send out as a, as a blog post. Uh, if you haven't, I'll... I'll put a link below to that. I'll put a link below to Couch's channel. I'll put a link below to uh, the Boswell uh, webpage so that you can check that out and get directions and all. Uh, but I'll but I'll link below to my holiday letter uh, on the blog. And I don't get anything from the blog. I enjoy writing it. It's not 
if there's advertisements there, it's because WordPress puts them on there. I don't monetize the blog. I, I'm not trying to drive traffic to it. It's just an outlet for me. But it, it, the annual holiday letter, I do kind of try to sum up the year a bit, talk about what's good, what's bad, and talk about the future. And one of the things that I talked about in this blog, talked about, wrote about in this blog, is the fact uh, that I am going to be shutting down the pipe restoration business or pipe repair business. Uh, I got to do this. It was not an easy decision. I thought about it a lot, but the fact is it's been too successful. You know, I started this four years ago, I guess, and the first year I probably did 20 or so pipes across the course of the whole year. The second year was a bit more. This year I opened a waiting list because last year was horrible with the number of pipes that came in. Uh, I just couldn't keep up and people were waiting forever and all that. So I said, okay, stop. I'm going to not take any more orders. And then in January I said, okay, we're going to have a waiting list. So you don't send me your pipe until I get to you on the waiting list. I opened that in January. I had to shut it in March when I got to 35 people waiting. And at that point I said, okay, I'm going to finish this off. And once I get to the end, I'll open it up again. Well, here we are December 26th and I still have five people waiting. Um, I'm slow. I don't have eight hour days to work on pipes. i sometimes have an hour or two once or twice a week to work on pipes. And I won't rush it because I take pride in the work and I, I do it because I want the customer, my friend, to have their pipe back in excellent condition and to be able to enjoy it. You know, I'm not just trying to slap a replacement stem on. I want that stem to feel like it's part of that pipe and I want it to smoke better than that pipe ever did. That doesn't happen in two hours. It takes me time. I'm slow. I just can't do it. You know, I can't keep up with the demand. I can't justify the financials, but that's not important to me. You know, if I could do this in a couple hours a week and not make anything on it, I'd do it. If I lost a little money, that might bother me. But, you know, if it was if it was 10 bucks a week, I probably would still do it. I, that's how much I enjoy it. But... It got to a point this year, and I hate to complain about a good thing. You know, I'm, I'm happy that, that it's been successful, but it got to a point this year where I did not have any time other than pipe work and regular work. Sometimes at night, I would just sit upstairs with my wife. She'd put whatever she was watching on TV, and I'd just fall asleep. You know, that, that was my life, and that's not good. It's not healthy. I got other interests. I've got other things I want to do. Some of which involve pipes. And if you if you read the blog, you'll get a get a hint at, at what I'm planning, uh, what I'm going to be working on in the coming year. The website is not going to go away because uh, I'm hoping that I will need it in the future. And I don't know what that means. You know, maybe someday I'll do I'll do pipe repair and restoration again. Maybe when I retire, I'll have the time for it. Maybe I'll just make cob stems and put them up on the website once in a while, or I'll, I'll make tampers and put them up on the website once in a while. I don't know. But I'm going to keep the website. And I might make other things. We'll see. But sadly, the pipe repair and restoration business is being closed as of, uh, well, as of today, because I'm not taking any new customers. But I'm going to finish those five that I've got, and uh, that will be the last, uh, at least for now. So it was hard to decide that. I'm sorry to folks that might be hoping for a future time slot, that's future slot to get their pipe work done. I can recommend other folks uh, if you get in touch with me. And you know, the tools are here. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna say no to a friend that needs something done. We'll see what the future holds. But I really appreciate everyone that trusted me with their pipes, that 
allowed me to sometimes bring them back to life, sometimes make them a bit better, sometimes just clean them. You know, I, I appreciate, I, I'm honored by the fact that you trust me with that. I appreciate that you value my work and I appreciate that you were willing to uh, you know, so generously pay for my time. So thank you all for that. Uh, and I'm sorry that I just can't continue to provide that service. So with that, I am going to wrap things up. Um, Boswell's meetup, December 30th. I'm going to get there around 11. They open at 9. Be there if you're in the area. It's going to be a great time. Chambersburg. Link below. Uh, I think that's it. So, my friends, I'm going to call this video to a close. Again, I hope you all had a wonderful Christmas. Happy Holidays. Looking forward to the New Year. I think I'll be... Well, I won't be back before the New Year, so I wish you all a very happy New Year. I'll see you in the New Year. And we will start up the Friday Night Live streams again the first Friday in January, because this Friday is New Year's Eve. Um, and I'll see you then. So thank you all, and until we speak again, I look forward to talking to you all again very soon. Goodbye now.